what's going on guys it's your boy dre coming at you with a new video apparently some of the tool tips for some of the new jobs in final fantasy 14 and walker have been leaked so we're going to be taking a look at some of these now it's important to remember that some of these potency numbers could potentially change by the end product so don't really worry about the actual numbers it's more about the concept of the job and what skills have been added in their effects so let's take a look at gunbreaker we still have the same basic stuff looks like you know weapon skills abilities that we've had since uh Shadowbringers. Uh, Rough Divide still has potency attached, so we're still going to be spamming this for damage. Sonic Break is still in the game. So is Bow Shock. Let's see. Oh. Like we saw in the job trailer, it looks like Burst Strike is added to the uh, continuation combo. So it has its own combo. Bloodfest adds three cartridges instead of two. All right, here we got a new ability, Heart of Corundum. It reduces damage taken, so it's upgraded Heart of Stone. Gives you an extra second, still 15%. And you can still give people your Brutal Shell. Now, looks like it, there's an additional effect. In the live letter, it talked about additive effects to sort of enhance like timing of giving people abilities or giving people defensive cooldowns. So this looks like part of what they were talking about. It only lasts four seconds. It grants the target reduced uh, damage taken for 15 seconds. Now, is this additive to the original 15 seconds? It seems like it would be, since it's a, an additional effect. But it reduces damage taken by 15% for 4 seconds. And it also grants Catharsis of Corundum. Which restores HP when HP falls below 15% or when the duration ends. So just free mitigation and free heals, looks like. Then we've got double down, a weapon skill. It was probably the new weapon skill that you saw in drawing a slash and an X. Cast time, 60 seconds. You know we're moving to 60 seconds and two minutes for our abilities and it costs two cartridge so this is the two cartridge weapon skill 1200 potency but that could change by the end of by the end product and 20 percent less for other enemies we still have our gnashing fang combo with the continuation Hyper Velocity seems like the continuation effect of Burst Strike. So we got that right there. All right, got our traits. Looks like not a whole lot new, just a little, a little touch of stuff added. Right here, we've got the trait to upgrade Heart of Stone. And looks like Aurora's getting two charges. A little bit of a potency increase. And we've got continuation. The burst strike continuation trait. Along with the three cartridge trait. It looks like that's about it for Gunbreaker. Alright, let's take a look at Paladin. Now, I'm not... too familiar with Paladin. Paladin's always been like the least, like the least 
cool job, at least regarding the tanks. So I've never really gotten into it, but they're basically all the same, all the tanks. You know, you've got your combo abilities, you've got your defensives. Sheltron's still there. Hollow ground, clemency. Now, intervention. Looks like it grants two new effects. Are these, I think these are new effects for intervention. Grants Knight's Resolve and Knight's Benediction. Similar to how Gunbreaker had um, the two clarity abilities effects. Now they've added this to a defensive. To sort of give you that extra, that extra defense and region. Let's see, still got wreck. Now we've got Confidier here, and we know know by the uh, the job trailer that we have a Confidier combo now. Looks like that's going to be Blade of Faith, Blade of Truth, and Blade of Valor. And they're going to restore MP, so I wonder how that's going to change your combo, given that these restore some MP. Then we have Ex Expassion. It looks like, let's see, is that an upgraded ability? Yes, it's Spirits Within. So it's AoE Spirits Within. All right, let's see, what else do they have? Atonement still in the game. Ah, oh, Holy Sheltron. This is what grants, it grants uh, Knight's Resolve and Knight's Benediction. Just like uh, Intervention does. And it's, Upgraded Sheltron. Yeah, Sheltron doesn't have those effects. So, Holy Sheltron will be how you get that. Uh, apologies for my voice. I just got my... My, uh... First COVID shot. So... Feeling a little bit under the weather. But otherwise, all good. Okay, so they added a healing effect to Holy Spirit and Holy Circle. It looks like. Let's see. Already went over Sheltron. Increased uh, potency for that uh, combo. Upgraded Spirit Within. And added a healing effect to Divine Veil. See, Divine Veil, does it still need to be propped by a heal? Yes, it does. Alright. That should be it for Paladin. Alright, now we've got Warrior. Now, Warrior didn't seem... Seems like all the tanks got like one or two things. Sort of like tied them over. Especially since they have done major work on other jobs. Uh, we've got our main weapon skills and abilities. Still have I. I don't know why it's not a trait, but okay. Let's see. Uh, like they went over in the live letter, Mithril Tempest gives you I. Let's see. Oh, I wanted to check. Okay, Inner Chaos still can't be bound to a different um, hotbar. Uh, it's still just a change of the button. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay, Upheaval shares a recast timer with another ability. Orogeny. Here we go, right here. It looks, okay, so this is AOE upheaval. All right, it looked, because it looked like it 
it might have been that they changed the animation for upheaval but i guess they just added the aoe version of upheaval In a release is 60 seconds moving into that window 60 and 120 i think let's see all right we're getting into the new skill should be i'll oh, nascent flare did they add the um in uh increased defensive to nascent flash looks like it it can stem the flow and then stem the tide as well so increase or reduce damage taken and then let's see nullifying damage equivalent to a heal of 400 potency for 30 seconds so similar to upgraded heart of stone or intervention just that increased defensive effect let's see Oh, bloodletting. Oh, it shares a re oh, nascent flash shares a recast timer with blood, blood wetting, not bloodletting. Reduces damage taken by ten percent. Okay, so blood wetting. They've given warrior back blood bath through blood wetting, which is great, actually. I know a lot of people have been asking for, they wanted bloodbath back. Okay, so stem the flow, reduces damage taken, so increased defensive effect and stem the tide, creates a barrier equivalent to a heal of 400, so just like with Nascent Flash. We have Primal Rend, delivers a crit direct hit to target and all enemies with decreasing effect so it doesn't consume stacks of inner release and it can only be so this is basically how continuation works it grants you an effect once another skill has been used so it grants you primal rend ready and then you can use primal rend after in a release so every in a release window you're going to use primal rend you still have cyclone and chaos let's see okay so raw intuition turns into blood wedding so it's an additional effect of what raw intuition was. Okay, so raw intuition uh, gives you bloodbath. Let's see. Still have the same traits. Now the masteries, decimate, spell cleave. Let's see. Okay, increase potency. Then a enhancement to equilibrium, granting healing over time. And then the enhancement for nascent flash that gives you buff defensives and then gives you a third charge of onslaught. All right, let's take a look at the next one. All right, Dark Knight. Dark Knight seemed to be the tank that stayed the same, at least looking at it in the job trailer. It was very samey, just if you could pick out one about three new abilities but it didn't look like they they didn't get rid of abyssal drain which i know abyssal drain's not really that good of an ability it's just bloat you still have salted earth i don't know why they've removed blazing arrow and shadow flare so why is there still one or two more abilities that are ground aoe's 
but looking at it we still got the same weapon skills same abilities dark mind living dead still sucks plunge they didn't get rid of the potency still spamming for dps delirium you get your stacks three stacks similar to inner release then we've got let's see uh, blackest nights still the same trans dark arts flood edge all right here we go ablation now this seems like the ability that was used if you look at the job trailer it was used on another party member after the dark knight cast uh blackest knight so it looks like it's a blackest knight that can just be used whenever you want on another party member or yourself without using any mp so it has two charges last 10 seconds reduces uh by 10 percent on a 60 second uh charge time then we've got uh, the namesake of the previous expansion, Shadowbringer. All right, it looks like it's Dark Passenger. Like it looked like Dark Passenger in the job action trailer, but it's a line AOE, 600 potency, might change. Uh, two charges, costs no MP. So after you, you know, you rip through your MP in your uh, burst, you can use this or you would probably use this in your burst seeing as it it looks like it has a higher potency than edge and flood so you probably go with this under burst over edge and shadow edge and flood but you don't want to over cap on your mp so you might use some of these to rid yourself of some while you're still under blood weapon And then we have salt and darkness. Oh, this is the ability that you saw in the job action trailer that the, he used from the salted earth. It does unexpected damage. It's just a damage ability proc. Can't be assigned to the hotbar. So the probably when it procs, it'll change salted earth to salt and darkness. And then you can just use that. Honestly, they should have just gotten rid of salted earth. They could have just taken the potency from Salted Earth and given you, given the potency to Salt and Darkness and just made it a standalone ability. Because the problem is anyone who plays Dark Knight knows that you've probably ran into a situation where someone either pulled the bo boss or enemies out of the Salted Earth or they never brought their ads to the Salted Earth in the first place. So you're just losing potency with this ability when you could just remove it, just like you removed Blazing Arrow from a uh, bard and then just added it to a standalone ability. All right, looking at the traits, we got the same old mastery, you know, blood, you know, get blood from blood weapon, dark side, Plunge still has two charges. Enhanced un. Why would we ever need enhanced unmend? It reduces recast time of plunge by five seconds when you execute unmend. So basically, when we run from an AOE, they want us to unmend. It'll reduce the plunge, and then you can plunge back in. But this was absolutely unneeded. This is just bloat. This is nobody asked for this. They would probably just thought hmm, we need to give Dark Knight something. I mean, it basically is almost exactly the same as it is right now. Oh, uh, let's just tack something on to unmend. I'm sure nobody will say nobody will say anything, please. But this is unneeded. No one asked for this. No one wanted this. Then we just have increased potency, increased potency to living shadow. And then we've got 
enhanced living shadow right here upgrades flood of shadow to shadow bringer so it increases the potency of your living shadow by having it do a higher potency attack in shadow bringer rather than using a flood of shadow which is some far far lower potency so big buff to living shadow I was wondering if it had something to do with these traits because right here it says that it can use shadow bringer but then it says it's at level 80 which it is right now so I was wondering if at level 80 you, it can use shadow bringer but it doesn't look like it it's tied to this trait right here at level 90 uh, black uh, dark knight I feel like they could have done more with, with Dark Knight. They could have gotten rid of Abyssal Drain, replaced it with a different ability, a new ability, taken, getting, gotten rid of Salted Earth, just put its potency into Salt and Darkness. It's just more, more bloat, more button bloat. That's not necessary, just with these two abilities alone. Now we've got Scholar. Scholar, my least used uh, healer, but it's basically, I understand how it works based on playing White Mage and Astro and playing Summoner. You know, spam Ruin, or you have Ruin, you've got the same spells, Bio, you know, your summons. Not a lot probably changed with the lower level abilities. Still have deployment tactics, XCOG, Broil, Chain. Alright, let's go to here we go. Broil 4. So we've got upgraded Broil. We have the Art of War 2, which we saw in the job trailer. Protraction. Increases the maximum HP of a party member or self by 10% and restores the amount increased. Increases HP recovery via healing actions by 10% for 10 seconds. All right, so a healing ability, an AU GCD ability, and we've got Expedient. Uh, this is the ability that they showed in the trailer that everyone's up in arms about increasing the movement speed or giving you sprint. Like it's, a, honestly it's very underwhelming but it gives you expedience and it gives you desperate measures expedience increases movement speed while desperate measures reduces damage taken by 10 percent for 20 seconds this doesn't seem like it's all right i mean it's just a aoe damage reduction but the increased movement speed just doesn't seem like they could have gone with anything else. It could have just been a heal. Like they literally had, they sat down and they thought, hmm, what can we give to Scholar? Cause we've got this new class, Sage. It looks freaking awesome, sounds awesome, gives all, has awesome abilities. But Scholar, we, got, we gave them one new ability, a couple, one or two. What effect should we put on it? Uh, maybe sprint. Yeah, sprint. That'll definitely be awesome. No, they could have. They could have given haste for ten. For they could have reduced this to ten seconds, and then given you haste instead. This just seems like why? Why increase movement speed? Like I get, you would think, oh, so you can just walk walk out of the AOE, but people aren't going to be expecting that. When it's used, people are going to be trying to, maybe if you're going you're like a max melee and you're trying to get out of an AOE and you just shoot farther than you wanted to, and then you're far away, the AOE goes off. Now you're running farther, even though you have sprint to get your ACG get to your uh, GCD before you uh, before it ticks 
it just seems like it was unnecessary we've got the fairy spells same thing you know veil you've got fey not a whole lot's changed it doesn't seem like it at least you know you got your upgrades the old upgrades to broil to bio let's see yep upgrade to broil four here on the trait upgrade to art of war all right here we go there's a buff to your healing potency so the physic embrace and seraphic veil and increased barrier potency to 180 and 160 oh and they reduce the uh recast time to 90 seconds for deployment tactics so yeah 90 seconds going off of the i guess to sort of like get it in line for every other window rather than be 60 seconds like they said uh, most of the things would be but we have you know some things at 90 seconds, some things at 45 seconds still, but it'll line up with every other window. This is where we get into the good stuff right here. We've got Sage tooltips. Oh, let's go right here. We've got Dosis. It looks like the basic spell. You know, your one spell to do potency and under cardian it gives you gives hp to target so to whoever your dance partner is this is the attack you'll use to give them heals while you're dpsing then we have diagnosis you know blanket heal looks like mm, yeah just normal heal we're all healed then we have Cardia, grant self the effect of Cardia and the party member Cardian. So this is your dance partner ability. And we've got prognosis. So we've got AOE heals. This Medica. Ingero. Igero. Igero. Then we got our rays right here. We got Physis. Oops. Get rid of that. Here we go, physics. Alright, so we got the region right here. Oh, it'll be region actually. So it's HP and HP uh oh no, it's just the AoE heal. Instant cast AoE heal ability. I don't know why I thought it was a region. Then we got Phlegma. This looks like it's the AOE damage spell, the first one. I believe that there's, let's see. Yeah, it deals unexpected damage to target and all enemies, decreasing with more enemies. Restores HP to targets. Yeah, so you can also use this to restore HP to your dance partner. Oh, it has charges, even though it's a spell and it costs MP still. So we've got an MP cost instant cast spell with charges. Okay. Then we've got, let's see, Eucrasia. Okay, so this is the spell that augments our other abilities. So it turns Dosis, so Dosis 3, which is just our normal spell, to Eucrasian Dosis. Diagnosis to Eucrasian. Just add Eucrasian to whatever ability. Diagnosis and Prognosis. So our AoE heal and our single heal, along with our attack spell. All right, Soteria doubles the cure potency of Cardian effects. 
So it increases the heals that the your dance partner gets for 10 seconds. Got Icarus, this should be our gap closer. Get us on a 45 second recast. Alright, and see they removed they don't have they had no potency for this one. So they could have removed potency from gap closers. That that way people wouldn't be spamming them for damage and they'd have them up for actual utility. But looks like it's just applies to Sage. We've got Drew Drewkel. Drewchel. Let's see. Restores targets HP. And it restores MP. So this is an ability that's going to use your gauge, it looks like. This gauge right here, it'll probably use your, let's see, uses Adder's Gall. You, or you actually accumulate stacks of the Adder's Gall. So yeah, Drew Cole and Kara Cole. Use the top of the gauge. And then you'll have the bottom gauge for Adder Steam. That the gauge build stack of adder sting when the barrier effect is completely absorbed so when you put a barrier on, on someone and it breaks you gain adder sting and then you can use it for abilities let's see where were we all right disgracia disgracia To deal damage to all enemies. So this was our part two of what was it? Flagma that we saw in the trailer. I believe we saw him Icarus and then he used Flagma, then he used Disgrazia. Or the opposite order, one of the two. So it stores HP to your partner as well. So anything that does damage looks like it's going to restore HP to your dance partner. We've got Caracol. Looks like a raid wide mitigation tool. So this cannot be stacked with Toracol which let's see doesn't look like we've gotten to that one it looks like it's this one right here so it doesn't stack with the cure so this toracol restores hp it reduces damage taken and it restores mp This one, it grants a region and restores MP. So this looks like it's going to be the room wide mitigation and then single target mitigation. And they don't stack. Let's see, Ixacol. Restores own HP and the HP of all nearby members. So that looks like it's an ability that just restores HP. AOE Medica. So it's like a Flacious, uh, the AOE of Flacious for White Mage. I wonder if MP is going to be a problem on. Sage, seeing how a lot of its abilities regenerate MP. Maybe it might not have a sort of a free heal ability like the White Mage has. That's why it has to restore its MP. It also has OGCDs that have a MP cost, so 
or actually not OG CDs, but uh, charge skills that have an MP cost. Let's see, we've got Zoe. Doubles the amount cured by your next healing spell. So similar to, I believe, an Astro skill. And it lasts for 30 seconds. Let's see, Pepsis. It stores own HP and the HP of nearby party members by removing your Excrasian diagnosis and your Eucrasian uh, prognosis. So let's see, that was our, our heal. Oh no, the Eucrasian version. Uh, let's see, we have a tool tip for those. Here we go. Eucrasian no diagnosis. So these are oh, the Eucrasian abilities are abilities that have their original effect and it looks like it also adds a barrier. So you can eat the barrier similar to how Scholar does. And then you can have increased uh, healing potency with Pepsis. Physis 2, so Medica 2. So we've got, we already went over Torkoal. Then we have Toxicon. Looks like an AoE damage that activates your dance partner heal. And it uses the Adder Sting. So this will be the instant uh, gauge ability. And we got Haima, creates an ability or a barrier, excuse me, around yourself and your target partner that absorbs damage equivalent to a heal of 150 potency. So, okay, so it's just an, uh, an ability, an OGCD ability that gives a barrier. It looks like you gain five stacks of Haima 10 on. When the barrier is completely absorbed, a stack is consumed and a new barrier is applied. Okay, so you can give a tank Haima and it gives them five stacks. Every time the barrier is broken, it applies a new barrier. So that ability that we saw in the job action trailer that looked like a delayed barrier, looks like it's actually Haima and it grants barriers after they break. So on multi-hit uh, like busters, it'll break the barrier, it'll reapply the barrier, break the barrier, reapply the barrier. When the effect expires, a healing effect is then applied. See, the cure potency is 150 per remaining stack. So if you don't use all the barriers, then when it ends, it'll increase the potency. That actually seems pretty nice. It is on a two minute timer though. So you've got doses two, increased damage. Flegma two, increased damage. Rizomara grants you Adder's Gall. So this will be like, uh, what's it called? Basically the draw ability of Gunbreaker. It just grants you a raw stack or Aether Flow. Grants you a raw stack of Adder's Gall. Got hollows, restores HP, and okay, so it just looks like a OGCD Aflacius. So it's just Aflacius, like a white mage. Then we got Panheima. Erects a barrier around yourself and party members that absorbs damage. It's similar to Haima. So this is the AoE version of Haima. And it grants five stacks for 30 seconds. That's the same thing as Haima. It grants you the heal if you still have stacks. You've got Dosis, which is the attack spell, just upgraded. Phlegma, same. It is the AoE spell, upgraded. That's two charges now, though. Let's see, oh, it did have two, two charges to uh, start with. See, at 85, you get enhanced healing magic, just like um, we saw in Scholar. 
Toxicon 2. Uh, looks like a damage attack that uses Adder Sting, just like the first one. So this is how you'll spam your Adder Sting, the bottom gauge down here. And then the top gauge will be for your healing. So bottom gauge for damage, top for healing. But it does work with your dance partner, so it will grant the healing effect of Cardian. We got Krasis, increases HP recovery, similar to how other jobs have that skill. Like uh, White Mage has the wings. We've got Numa, which deals damage in a straight line. So this was the laser that we saw in the job action trailer. It does damage in a straight line with decreasing damage for multiple enemies. Then we got a heal that is applied and a damage reduction. So basically it looks like if you hit your party members with the beam, actually, I wonder if you have to hit them with the beam or if you just, the beam doesn't even matter. If it's a, yeah, it looks like it's a 25 yard yom radius. So it grants you damage reduction and heals and damages and it activates Cardian. So this is real nice, real, real nice, but it is on a two minute recast. Then we've got the, are you crazy in abilities? So are it, the, um, the heal, so you've got the AOE heal. Both of these, when they're in their Eucrasian version, will grant a barrier. And they do not stack with the Scholar version of these abilities. Then you have Eucrasian Doses. Oh, this is how you apply the dot. So in the job action trailer, we saw that when you use the equation version of Dosis, you apply a dot to the enemy. And that dot will also heal, or at least the damage that you apply will heal your Cardian partner. And it just upgrades over time, same as your normal ability. And we've got our traits. You get, you get at, uh, Adder's Gall every 20 seconds for three stacks, increases potency to your attacks. And let's see, more increased potency. Then you get Adder Sting. Let's see, offensive magic mastery. So more potency. Okay, so this adds the heal over time to Caracol. And then we've got another upgrade to our magic and we've got another spell down here. Discrasia 2. See, did we go over Discrasia? Let's see. Yes, it is the AOE damage dealing attack. And it just does AOE damage and it activates Cardian. And we have another trait that decreases the recast of Zoe. Now let's go over Eucrasia again. Eucrasia is basically dark arts. It's the dark arts of healers. You proc your dark arts, then it affects your, um, your spells. So your attack spell, your heal and your AOE heal. It's like if Astro was able to access both its barrier version and its heal version at the same time, just like with one button, like with a, with that, like with the dark arts. And let's take a look. What? Oh yeah. It's a crazy right here. This is what, um, brings you the Eucrasian effect. And we have the Adder's Gall Gauge. Like I said earlier, it fills up over time. 
it'll grant you the top stacks right down here right up here actually and it'll affect it'll allow you to cast your like OGCD heals your OGCD barriers and when you it looks like when you actually break let's see let's go over it again so Toxicon uses the Adder Sting that's the ability that you uses it now what grants you Adder Sting when yeah when the barriers are completely absorbed so when a barrier barriers break you'll get Adder Sting similar to how uh, Darkest Night works Adder Sting can be used for Toxicon let's go on to the next one actually so now we've got astro now astro is the healer that i played the first healer i ever played we've got our same spells light speed reduces cast time still you know essential dignity two eds too easy right here and we've got let's see our draws our redraw they changed redraw let's see just same old stuff sinistry uh, divination all right i'm unfamiliar with uh astro as it currently is i played astro in heavensward and i do not remember this ability right here astrodyne astrodyne is a new ability it looks like it grants an effect using the astro signs in your deck so one time grants harmony of spirit one grants harmony of or two grant harmony of body and three signs grant spirit body and mind for 15 seconds uh spirit restores mp body reduces spell cast time and recast time and auto attack delay by 10 percent and a mind increases damage dealt and healing potency by five percent then let's see earthly star all right same old same old got still have horoscope all right same still got neutral sect all right here we go new abilities we got uh enhanced malefic so fall malefic enhanced gravity exaltation reduces damage taken so this is going to be our uh, ability that reduces damage for eight seconds and it restores hp at the end of the effect so it looks like they with the healers they've really added more heals to abilities so when like they've added this trope where it reduces your damage taken and then at the end of the duration it grants you a heal so it looks like you're getting more heals which should promote people to dps more on a healer we all know that's not going to happen because people, I don't know why they've got it in their head that healers shouldn't have DPS, but this will allow you the wiggle room to just DPS more. Then we have Macrocosmos. Deals unexpected damage to all enemies. So this is the star shower that looked amazing in the job action trailer. So we've got AOE damage with fall off. And then it grants macrocosmo macrocosmos to yourself and all nearby party members. Let's see. The action changes to Microcosmos when you execute it. For the effects duration, 50% of damage taken is compiled. Restores HP equal to the compiled damage when the effect expires or upon execution of Microcosmos. 
amount restored cannot exceed max HP. All right, so it's also a spell and it costs 600 MP. So basically you'll do your damage. You'll get macro cosmos. Then it'll change to microcosmos and compile the damage that you receive as a heal. So it'll basically work as a damage attack that works like a earthly star. It, you'll cast it, you'll great, get the uh, microcosmos, you'll wait out the duration, and then at the end, you'll receive the maximum amount of heals. And then we still have the cards that buff the various roles. Lord of Crowns and Lady of Crowns. Let's see. And we've got the, still the same traits. You get clarifying draw after draw, which came with the redraw. I believe it came with the redraw change. Instead of like spamming redraw stacks or draw stacks. Let's see. Enhanced draw grants and signs. You know, we've still got that. Still got hyper light speed and things like that. All right, new traits. Upgrade to Malefic. Upgrade to Gravity. Enhanced healing. So all healers are basically getting more potency heals. Looks like for this expansion. But I doubt that they're actually going to increase the amount of damage that we take. So it's just sort of bringing the floor up and making it so that healers probably are more comfortable DPSing. And it allows for the accumulation of charges for celestial intersection. So that is our AOE ability heal looks like that has charges and it also erects a barrier so it just grants charges to that ability and we still have the same uh, arcana gauge you've got your seals the card and then the crown card all right now we've got white mage we've got our same spells you know the stones the arrows all your low level spells, Benny, Thin Air, Misery. All right, here we go. We've got upgrade to Glare in Glare 3. We've got upgrade to Holy or Holy 3. Actually, you know what I don't remember? I don't remember a upgrade to holy in the first place. Like where, okay, so if this is holy three, then what was holy two? Was that supposed to be Aflacious? Am I missing something? Was holy not always holy? Or did they just skip two and go to three? Since glares at three, I guess. I don't know. Did glare just go to three? Yeah, they just from glare one to glare three. All right. Somebody doesn't know how to count, but okay. We've got upgrade glare, upgrade holy, aqua veil. This is the ability that looked like uh, that one water ability that white mage has that they took away. And it just reduces your damage taken just like the other equivalent abilities on the other healers. And then we've got Lily Bell. This was the ability in the job action trailer 
that looked like a sort of healing well that the white mage placed on the side. And it places a healing blossom at your designated location and grants five stacks of Lily Bell for 15 seconds. Taking damage will expend a stack and heal you and your party within 20 yams. So anytime you take damage, it's just going to spam out a heal. And it can only happen once a second. It goes away when all the stacks are expended or the healing or the effect actually goes away. Any remaining stacks will trigger an additional healing effect, similar to how uh, Sage and Scholar abilities would trigger healing effects on the end of durations. So they're really, really going for like duration ending heals. So rather than having you waste it, just at the end, it'll just spam out a heal. And we've got the same traits. We've got the upgrade to glare. We've got the upgrade to holy. And we've got the upgrade to potency of heals. Just like with the other healers. Along with the upgrade to venison, which grants you charges. And that looks like it's it for white mage. All right. Here we've got the new weapon skill for Monk that we saw at the end of its portion of the job action trailer. Phantom Rush delivers an attack to the target and all enemies nearby with damage fall off and it grants Formless Fist. So you'll be able to use whatever weapon skill you want outside of it after you use it. Now, it can only be used under the effect of Lunar Nadi and Solar Nadi, as well as three Beast Chakra. So if you remember in the job action trailer, we saw that the monk under perfect balance, I believe, will obtain uh, chakras and basically when you use your weapon skills, you'll obtain a chakra and at the end of obtaining three chakras, you'll be able to use Masterful Blitz and then activate an ability. Now, once you activate your Masterful Blitz, you'll be granted a Lunar or Solar Nadi. And then you'll do whatever combination you need to obtain the Lunar Nadi, then whatever combination you need to obtain the Solar Nadi and then you'll activate Phantom Rush once you obtain the three Beast Chakras and you have your Lunar Nadi and your Solar Nadi. Then we've got Rising Phoenix. This is the one of the uh, Masterful Blitzes, it looks like, that we saw in the, in the uh, job action trailer for Monk. It deals physical fire damage to target and all enemies with fall off and it opens the solar nadi and grants you formless fist and it's executed under three beast chakra so it looks like beast chakra is what's going to be uh, underneath the uh, normal chakra gauge and that's how we're going to be executing our masterful blitzes using beast chakra. All right, now we have a bard ability in Radiant Finale. And it increases the damage dealt by yourself and nearby party members. So bards, finally, they're not deaf anymore. They can actually hear their own songs and benefit from the effects. Effectiveness is determined by the number of coda active in the song gauge. So if you remember in the job trailer, it, there were three little coda beside the beside the uh, song gauge and it looks like it's two percent four percent five percent for the uh, corresponding coda here we've got a new trait for a bard and it looks like they finally finally gave bloodletter charges 
So now you're not going to be uh, missing any sort of blood letter procs. So you'll spin a blood letter and then you'll see, you'll spin them both and then you'll obtain more blood letters procs and you won't over cap. All right, here we have Phantom Kamai Tachi. And this was the ability that the ninja used in the job trailer to grant, I believe, Hutan. Now it says your shadow deals wind damage to target and all enemies with fall off. And it can only be executed under Boonshin. Perhaps maybe this isn't the ability. It seemed like the ability that the ninja used to get Hutan, but it looks like a just a general weapon skill for ninja because it doesn't say that it grants Hutong, even though it grants, uh, it does wind damage. And we saw in the trailer that this ability actually grants Hutong. So maybe it'll be located under the trait. We just haven't found it out yet. The uh, media tour should be, uh, the embargo should be up in about a week. So we'll know then. Now we've got the Black Mage ability, Paradox. Costs 1600 MP. And it deals just a raw potency of 510. The Astral Fire bonus refreshes Astral Fire and grants Firestarter with a 40% chance. And the effect, we all know what Firestarter does. It lets you cast a Fire 3 with no MP and no cast time. And then the Umbral Ice bonus, it requires no MP to cast and refreshes the duration of Umbral Ice. Alright, so we saw in the job action trailer that there's a new ability that uses fire and ice, and it looks like it's going to be Paradox. Now, when you use it under Astral Fire, it's going to be have a cast time, it looks like. Now, under when you use it under Umbral Ice, there's going to be no cast time, and it's going to be instant cast, it looks like. And it'll refresh Umbral Ice. So, it, I guess it, it, it allows you to not use, like, Blizzard 4 or Blizzard 5 when you're able to use Paradox. Or rather, Blizzard 5 or Fire 5. To refresh your astral fire so this will just refresh it instead and then we have the ability uh, amplifier that just grants you a polyglot stack and it can only be used with uh, fire or ice and it's on a 120 recast time and here we've got the soul ability that we have for reaper which i'm super excited about reaper i'm gonna be maining it on launch i'm gonna level it up first super hyped about reaper now the spell we have here is communio communio you deal unexpected damage to target and all enemies with a fall off effect and enshrouded ends upon using it and it requires one stack of Lemure Shroud. Now we saw this attack in the uh, job action trailer. It is the finisher that you use when you are enshrouded, when you're in your enshrouded stance. So when, you, when you've when uh, you basically merged with your avatar, this will be the finishing spell that you use in your burst. Looks like that for right now are all of the uh, potential Endwalker leaks that we have right at the moment. Now the media tour is going to be, the embargo for the media tour is going to be coming up in a week. So this was just a little bit of a taste to sort of like tide us over until a week from now. Until we get all of the tool tips, we're going to see the job in action and you're going to see those things from probably your favorite uh, Final Fantasy 14 uh, content creator. 
that was invited to the media tour. We had a press release that designated which content creators were going to be at the media tour. So when the embargo is up in a week, you know, find your favorite content creator and take a look at all of the media tour content because I am going to be looking all over that Reaper footage. Monk looks great with the rework. Summoner looks amazing and I play Summoner a lot right now. So looking at the new changes, it's going to be amazing. Sage looks like it's going to be great. I'm gonna be maining that for my healer. And then I'm gonna keep rocking the Gunbreaker class for my tank. So I'll probably rock Gunbreaker for tank, uh, Sage for healer. And then for melee, I'll have my Reaper. For ranged, I'll have my Machinist. And then for magic, I'll probably rock Summoner. But I do also really like Red Mage. So I'll probably level Red Mage, but I'll definitely level Summoner first. But I'm definitely going with the Reaper on launch first minute. All right, with that, that is going to be it for today. I am super excited for that media tour footage, you know, leave a like, a comment, subscribe, you know, hit the bell. If you want to see more videos regarding the media tour footage, the uh, Final Fantasy XIV uh, jobs that are being introduced with Endwalker, any Final Fantasy XIV content that you want to see. And with that said, I'm out.